Coming up on today's edition of the Art Marketing Podcast, we're talking about marketing your art or photography in Q4, the omni-channel marketing playbook. And we're gonna attempt to answer the question, what to do about paid traffic for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. So as I record this, uh, the whole Black Friday, Cyber Monday, uh, big deal is about two weeks away. And we've been working pretty furiously uh, over here at Art Storefronts, attempting to get all of our customers ready, getting their plans in place, offering additional training on how to execute a Black Friday sale um, from start to finish. And it's been really fun, actually. You know, you get, you get everything from like people that literally just launched their website like a week ago or even in some cases like a couple of days ago, to people who have been around for months and others for years and years and years. But you find that, you know, in almost all cases, like everybody could use some extra guidance on executing a proper Black Friday sale. There's just, there's a lot of, you know, moving pieces in a well-executed uh, well executed sale plan, playbook, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, there's lots of opportunities to always be get, get better at running them. Like, you know, even for us all the time, you're constantly learning, you're constantly trying something new, you're learning, you're baking it into your process and you're moving on to the next. So it's been a fun time. And I think one of the questions that comes up most often is how to handle paid traffic, which for our purposes, let's, you know, specifically define it as how to spend money in Facebook, on Facebook and Instagram and the other platform ads that Facebook owns. So I figured it would be a good time to get a podcast in the water addressing that very topic, uh, rehashing some of our older ideas about the upcoming sale and the why. And, you know, again, I think it's always it's always good to go through the tactical, hear it another way, get some more why, uh, understand all the moving pieces of a big sale. So let's start at the top with uh, the paid traffic piece and specifically cold traffic, which I need to define again for clarity. Cold traffic, I love the the relationship example. Cold traffic is someone you've never met. Hi, my name is Patrick, nice to meet you. Tim, cool, okay, Tim, nice to meet you. That's cold traffic, they've never met me, they haven't had an experience with my brand, they haven't had an experience with my art, right? So as we think about cold traffic and attempting to spend money on those people, starting about a week ago, all the way up to Cyber Monday, uh, a couple of things, one, the marketplace, by which I mean the competition for people spending on ads, on Facebook and Instagram and the rest of the properties right now, it's, it's through the roof. The competition is through the roof. Already today, as I record this, November 18th, and for, like I said, a week and a half previous, I've already seen the costs getting out of control. All of these, these companies that aren't normally spending so much money are all flooding the Facebook ads marketplace, which is just sending the costs through the roof. So if I'm a shepherd, I'm steering my sheep away from cold traffic, period. It's just not worth it. Don't do it. The time for cold is not now. It's just not now. It will come again as soon as, soon as that Cyber Monday is done and all of these dollars leave the marketplace. It'll be a great time to go after cold again. But right now, it's just it's not worth it. Yes, we have the increased cost in the marketplace, which is a huge problem in and of itself, right? Especially if you're just getting started. But we also have the attention piece to think through. Analogy time. Trying to go after cold traffic right now during these next few weeks is like trying to throw a party when a hurricane is coming to town. Let's say I own my own club, Patrick's. My job is to pack it with people. A hurricane is coming. What do people do ahead of a hurricane? What do they do? They go to the store and they buy supplies. They board up their windows. They move their valuables elsewhere. They trailer their boats out of the water. They batter down the hatches. They make sure everything's seen to. What do they not do? Likely look at my ad for the Friday Rager, $2 you call it all nights with DJ What's His Face and special guest who gives a damn. Nobody is going to care that I'm throwing a party, and most importantly, no one is going to come, period. When a hurricane is coming to town, it is not a good time to throw a party, at least not in the way that, that uh, I'm describing it. So the hurricane is the holiday season. It's upon us. Not only are the costs higher in the ads marketplace, stated another way, 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 way more expensive to try and be effective with uh, cold ads, but everybody is preparing for the holidays for this hurricane that's coming. And, you know, what are we going to do for Thanksgiving? What about the travel arrangement? Who is going to cook? Are you bringing your girlfriend? Get the extra table down from the garage. Susan, could you please tell your boyfriend to not have six beers before dinner and start talking about politics again like last year? Okay, great, thanks. 
All of those things are going to be on our mind, pulling at our attention, keeping us off of our phones, off of our computers, and it's just not the time for cold traffic. Now, if you're one of these people that are selling kitschy, uh, one-off impulse buy type of stuff, the ultimate beach chair or the greatest hoodie ever made or a new directional $150 joystick controlled sprinkler head you could blast dogs with that are peeing on your lawn, perfect time for you to use cold traffic. People are going to be scrolling through their feeds, looking for a one-off purchase, great time for you. But those are all, you know, they're all impulse buy type of items of which I do not consider art for most people to be a impulse buy item. So cold traffic, what are we recommending? Stay out of it until Cyber Monday, right? And, you know, moreover, like we sell software, right? We're not running ads because we don't have any time sensitivity whatsoever to sell software during this whole period of time. We can, there's, there's, you know, the, the building is not going to catch on fire if we don't. So we can save all of our money. And as soon as this rush to buy ads is done, we can invest it where we're getting the attention for significantly cheaper because all of the money is sucked out of the ecosystem afterwards. So also, it sh I should be said, like, are there some artists out there who are going to have some sort of must have must buy gift guide and, 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 and be able to go after cold? Yeah, yeah, there's going to be some. And maybe you're the hot hit of, of the holiday season. If so, you're very lucky, but it's also going to be very few. You know, what we advocate big picture is art is really not an impulse buy. You know, you've been marketing all year. You've been marketing all year long to build up the tension, to get people to know your brand, to have exposure so you can get their attention for a sale. But going to cold people is just not the time to do it. I think I've, I think I've covered that and then some. That leaves us with warm traffic. Again, let's define it. Oh, hey, Patrick. Nice to see you again, right? They know me. They've seen me. They've had some sort of experience or interaction with my brand. So I want to get into that, what we advocate you do for that. Um, but before, <clears throat> excuse me, before we get into that, we have to talk about something first. We have to start with the free attention, the earned attention, the attention you already own and don't have to pay to acquire again. You know, the, this, is, this is the reason, really, that we advocate that you market all along. It's for this sale, for this, this moment right now. And, you know, your email list, your social followings on the various different platforms, your messenger list if you're doing messenger marketing. This is where we want to start, and we can come back to the subject of warm traffic and how we advocate you play it after, after we cover it. And really, you know, this, this sets the table for the most important part of a good Black Friday, Cyber Monday sale. And it's, it's this concept of omni-channel consistent, meaning all of the messages match with one another marketing. Our goal is to start with a good message, a good offer. Uh, that's your percentage off, your, your, your discount. We're going to give it scarcity. So the deal is going to have a finite amount of time until it expires. And then we are going to consistently and strategically hammer all of the channels we market in at the same time with the sole goal of getting attention, which everyone, again, in hurricane preparation, holiday preparation, very hard to do. And so when you think of that hurricane analogy, you know, if you're going to be fighting that hard for attention, which you are, like it or not, you're going to need everything you've got in the arsenal working together with one another. So that's the importance of omni-channel marketing, and I want to cover it. Um, and we have covered this in the past. Um, we've covered it in an extremely visual way. I think I did like a Facebook Live a year and a half ago, two years ago or so, that covers it all visually from start to finish. There's actual email copy. There's actual subject lines. Uh, there are... God, there's a whole bunch of stuff in there. So I'm, I'm going to put the video in the show notes. If you're a more visual person, you feel like you need a guide, I'm going to include that video. You can watch it. It's 23 minutes, and you're going to get the whole picture of what the whole thing looks like. It's pretty good. Um, I had to rewatch it, and it, it's still totally, totally relevant, even being two years old. So that's a good one. It'll be in, in, in the show notes. But in the meantime, let me rehash you know, the finer points of this omni-channel strategy for those that have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, and then I'm going to get into the warm audience portion. So... Depending on how you run your sale, on how sophisticated you plan on going at this particular sale, you should have some various different touch points as you go through it, right? And let me explain. Let's say you tease the sale. That's a touch point. Let's say you actually announce the sale. That's a touch point. Uh, let's say you send a reminder for the sale somewhere during the middle of it. 24 hours before it expires, you send, there's 24 hours left. Don't miss out. And then let's just say you extend it, right? Each time you do any of those, you, 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 you want to you wanna leverage everything you have in your arsenal. So let me pick one out. and Let's say you're announcing the sale. Um, that's what most people are doing this week. We advocate anyway. So you're going to email your list. You're going to say, sales coming. You're going to post on Facebook. 
you're going to post on Instagram, you're going to run an Instagram, Instagram story, you're going to send a broadcaster and messenger, whatever you got, right? Fire all your guns at once and explode into space. That's essentially the concept of omni-channel marketing. And let's say it's announcing your sale, as most folks will be doing as I record this. Um, and let's see, I'm going to have to come up with an analogy, which one do I want to use? What you're going to do in this is you're going to lead with some of your best selling images. You're going to set your discount. I'm saying in this email you're going to send, uh, which should be the biggest discount of your year. A lot of people are asking questions about discounting. What do I do? How do I do it? How do I approach it? There's no golden one rule fits all, you know, one size fits all rule. There's not. You have to make some adjustments for how you, how you sell, what you sell, how big uh, your margins are, what your price points are. But, it, you know, the rule of thumb, it should be the biggest sale you have all year um, or close to it. So. Whatever your discount is, is what your discount is. I don't want, I don't want to make the whole podcast about that one, although there, there certainly could be. So in your email, we're going to have our discount. We're going we're gonna to include some of our best-selling images, right? We're going to make sure the discount has a scarcity and expires, right? Um, and then the big picture idea is we are going to make sure that in addition to the email, we always leave with the email, all of the rest of the updates or social messages or anything else that you blast out is consistent both with the images, the language, all of it with what you're sending an email. And the big picture idea is I'm going to send the email. You're promptly going to ignore it. A couple hours later, you're going to be on Instagram. You're probably going to see my post. You're promptly going to ignore it. A couple hours later, you'll be on Facebook. You're going to promptly see my post. Then maybe you go back to the email, then maybe you check out the sale, right? That's the power of the omni-channel messaging. People are busy, they need to see it in all the channels. Uh, concrete example. I am, uh, let's say, I'm a horse photographer. I take photos of horses. My discount is 30% and it expires midnight on Black Friday, let's just say. Excuse me. My email starts with a horse emoji, mm, we're not creative, and says, galloping into Thanksgiving, with my biggest sale ever. In the email, I have my best-selling photos, and if, if you haven't sold anything yet, just pick what you think your favorite ones are, but if you've got your best sellers, definitely lead with those. Uh, and let's say in my instance, it's four photos, one is a Clydesdale, one's a Lippin's Honor, one's a Thoroughbred, and one is a Mustang, uh, which we'll call Sally, because that's what Wilson Pickett did. Um, that's my email, I talk about the discount, horse emoji, galloping into Thanksgiving, my biggest sale ever, Leading with my images, it expires midnight. Okay, great. On Facebook, I would author a post that dovetails with this. Remember, same language, same imagery. Just remind people the exact same thing. And on Facebook, I could say something like, giddy up. My biggest sale of the year is on. 30% off store-wide on some of my best-selling images, just like Mustang Sally here. Ride, Sally, ride. And I have a picture of, of my Mustang photo, right? The Instagram post with the Lippins on her looking majestic in similar language. An Instagram story, similar language, flipping through all four different breeds. Uh, a messenger broadcast, again, using the same language. Hey, Patrick, you might have already seen this. Uh, you might have already seen my post, but I just wanted to let you know that I'm running my biggest sale of the year. I don't want you to miss out on it. Uh, these are some of my best sellers if you want to take a look, right? Like similar language, similar imagery, consistency, all the channels at once. And it's an extremely effective way to market. It's an extremely effective way to market all the time. It is an extremely important way to market, extremely necessary way to market uh, during, during this hurricane, during this holiday Thanksgiving season. And what do most people do? Most people send one email and that's it. And maybe post something on Facebook and that's it. And guess what? That's not enough. And even if you do post on both places, most people don't do it strategically uh, with the same messages and the same imagery. And most people that do send an email and maybe send a Facebook post, don't do an Instagram, don't do an Instagram story and don't combine all of them once at, at once, which is just so, so critical. So this is what you've got to do. This is completely free to do. It just takes some clever thinking and writing and planning and it's just insanely effective. It just absolutely works. And anything you have uh, unique to your situation, obviously you want to bring it to bear. If you've got thousands of YouTube subscribers, then make sure you publish a YouTube video, take it from unlisted to listed, which will email all your subscribers, you know, Pinterest, what, whatever you have in your arsenal, run with it and use it, right? And I would, I want to talk quickly about um, timing too. You don't want, you don't want to, you know, just like the fact I said that song there, fire all your guns at once. You don't want to fire them all at once. You want to stagger them a little bit. So 
send the email and then 30 minutes later make the facebook post and then maybe an hour and a half later do the instagram post and then keep the instagram story running all day and then maybe you resend it unopens the next day right like stagger stagger the various different timed drops of each we find is is the most effective way to do it rather than hammer them all at once you know you're going to get some people in the morning some people in the middle of the day some people at the at the end of the day some people even the next day so that's a good way to think about it a good way to do it and it this works 100 percent of the time and if you look if you don't have any uh, uh appetite for paid traffic or you've never run an ad before in your life and you just don't feel like this is the season to do it all good all good just do the omni channel the omni channel will be incredibly effective you'll learn a ton and you're going to get more attention than you would if you just would have sent that email that's the omni channel again video walking through the entire thing in the show notes if you want to see it now we can get onto paid traffic and warm traffic specifically again these are people that that, that we know right that know us that have had an interaction with our brand uh, why I'm on the subject of video, also made a video for our customers on this one. There's like one sticky thing in there that you probably won't have in your setup that our customers do. But other than that, uh, in this video, I literally go from start to finish. How to create all the audiences that I'm about to advocate. I go through step by step, create each single solitary one, show you all the pitfalls, all the ups, the downs, what to watch out for, what to do, how to combine them all into an ad group, and even how to create the ad. The whole video from start to finish is 10 minutes. 10 minutes is as long as it took to do this. Say that to say, one, there's a video to walk you through visually, so you can just loosely listen to what I'm about to advocate and go through. Also, 10 minutes. 10 minutes was all it took, and I fumbled around. I'm not even that good at this. Uh, 10 minutes. So that's how quickly that you can put a paid spend behind your omni-channel marketing, and it really is, if you've never done it, I'm, I'm, I'm super encouraging you to do it. So that's the video in the show notes, but let me advocate and you know start getting into the tactical and you know big picture the digital marketing landscape as it is in this the year of our Lord Q4 2019. Facebook owns all the attention. You want it, you got to pay for it. That's it. Even if it's attention you worked hard to create, even if there were likes that you paid for, uh, Instagram followers that you paid for, it doesn't matter. Is it annoying? Absolutely, it's annoying, but it just is what it is. Um, those are the rules. So, you know, organic reach, both those platforms back in the day, by which I mean you'd post something, all of your followers and fans would see it. Those days are gone. They're not coming back ever. You have to pay to play. If you want access to the attention you own, you have to give Facebook money. Those are the rules. But there's good, there's, there's good news in all of this because there's, there's some strong benefits to the whole thing again. So when I speak of benefits, I mean specifically and for a nominal fee, uh, uh, to be able to be set by you, the ad buying patron, you can invest to show the people your sales message way, way, way more effectively than just posting organically. So you actually do stand a chance of all of your fans, anyone that's interacted with your branch, actually seeing your marketing message. And that's, you know, that's a tremendous boon for what we're after here for trying to sell art online. Now, the idea here is we're going to create our organic posts on Facebook, on Instagram, on Instagram stories, and we're going to put advertising dollars behind them so Facebook will show them to the people that know us. So let's define how we're gonna target all of these people that know us. Um, and these are, these are all the ways that I recommend at a macro what people should do. And I would say your situation might be a little bit different, but what I see is that most artists and photographers that are selling online, and I'm not talking about someone else's website. I'm not talking about Fine Art America or Etsy or eBay or wherever else. I'm talking on a site you own. Most are solo entrepreneurs. Most are new or just getting their feet wet with uh, advertising on Facebook. And so they're probably just getting started as well. That's like a large portion of our customer base. And I would say a large portion of the industry period because it's sort of like a new paradigm shift. People selling their own art online and owning everything. Um, come on in. The water's just fine. Dip a toe first if you like. So that's like the big picture macro. But I also see a lot of people that hire consultants. And, you know, consultants is just a tough gig. And it doesn't matter if it, the consultants is a tough gig for um, everybody, really. Like, in order for you to be successful with a consultant, a consultant has to be so close to what you do, your industry, your pain points, your problems, and have a tremendous amount of experience. That's number one. I don't know why I'm going on this consultant rant, but I'm in it now. Number two, oh, I know why. Number two, if you don't sign up for an, a, long, a, a very, very long relationship with these people, a year, two years, and say, you know what, no matter what, I'm going to go two years, we just never see them being successful. But why I brought that up is even if you have consultants, I see them screwing this up all the time because I have access to the ads account on this warm traffic, this situation, this warm traffic piece in general. So 
I'm saying all that before I say what audiences we create. I'm gonna go through here what I believe most people should be doing. And oftentimes early on, you need momentum. You need email addresses. You need your remarketing audiences charged up. You need traffic. You just need to get the ball rolling down the hill early on. So that part is critically important. Once you have that, once you get to that place, once you're selling well, then you start becoming a little bit more, um, draconian is not the word, but I'm just going to use it because I want to keep moving, draconian on strident, stringent on your audience selection. You start peeling it back a little bit and making them a little bit smaller. And so I say that, say anyone that's already in that place will hear you know, what I'm advocating in terms of these audience creations and saying, ooh, that's a really wide net you're casting. Yes, early on you want to cast a really wide net. Later, you refine it and you shrink the net down a little bit and that's how it goes you, and, and, and you move forward that way. So audience number one, let's get into it. The very first audience that you're going to create, it's going to become part of an ad group that you're going to show ads to uh, for Black Friday, for Cyber Monday. Number one, big surprise here, it's your email list, right? You can either email or uh, pardon me, export your email list out of your email service provider, your MailChimp, your Drift, your Constant Contact, whatever you have. Uh, or you can create a spreadsheet and you can just put all these things in manually and you can uh, give it to Facebook that way. Facebook will take whatever you've got it. The match rate generally improves. What do I mean? At a minimum, we have to have an email address. If we have a first name, a last name, a zip code, a county, a state, a city, we'll take that too. Uh, all of that comes into play on Facebook and how they match. They're really good at matching anyway, which means matching the email address that you give them to a person that you can show ads on on Facebook. So we start with our email address. That's audience number one. You get that up from your email service provider, or you can make a spreadsheet and do it manually. That's number one. Number two is going to be the traffic. Number two warm audience is going to be the traffic from your website visitors. So these are the folks that have visited your site all day long. Now, Facebook... This assumes also to be able to do this, you need to have the Facebook or have had the Facebook hopefully all year um, or at least for the last 180 days, the Facebook pixel installed on your website. So if somebody comes to your website, um, Facebook knows who they are, it matches to their profile and you can show those people ads. Now there's a date slider on this one. You can set it up to as high as 180 days or as low as one, anything in between. Again, most are early on. I advocate, given it's the time of year, go for the 180 days. Um, you know, if you're a little bit more advanced, then you'll probably pare it down to 30 days or 60 days or 90 days. Uh, third, I like to make an audience for people that have engaged with your Facebook page. This is anybody that has liked or commented or shared or clicked on an image or a link in any of your posts. And I think you can go back all the way to a year in this one. So you can say, create me an audience, Facebook of people that have engaged with my page last 365 days. Boom. Now this only works if you have a Facebook business fan page for your art. So if you just got a personal page, it's not gonna work for you. Uh, you can skip on to the next one. We do the same thing with Instagram. And again, I've got a video walking through how to do every single solitary one of these, step by step if you need it. So it'll be in the show notes, otherwise you can just listen. Third, uh, we're gonna create an audience of anyone that has interacted with our Instagram business profile all year long. Again, you can do 365 again, uh, this needs to be a business page. So I realize a lot of you, you know, are individual artists and I'm not advocating you start an Instagram business page, a personal one's probably gonna get you more traction. So you might not have it. If you don't have it, it's all good, skip it. Um, fifth, if you post videos on Facebook, then you can create an audience based on what percentage people have watched the video. Everything from, you know, viewed it, which definitely don't do that one because Facebook lies about those stats, all the way up to, you know, Create me an audience of people that have watched 10% of my videos or 20% or 30% or 40%. I find anything over 20% is just, it's, it's just fine. You don't need to, depending on your video length and everything else, just a, a macro rule of thumb. Over 20%, great. So you can create an audience of anybody if you've been posting videos that have watched any of your videos all year long. Um, and so you can select every video you've made and create an audience out of that. Great idea. Sixth audience. Uh, if, you're, if you're active on Messenger, if you have a ManyChat Pro account, uh, you win running contests. A ton of our customers are doing these, so this is totally applicable for us. I don't know, it might not be for you guys, but if you do, you can go into your ManyChat account. It requires a pro account, so a paid account. Um, they start at $10 a month, totally worth it. And you can export, export what are called PSIDs. Um, and I don't know, I can't remember what the, the acronym stands for, but they're called PSIDs, and it's like, it's basically a serial number that denotes your Facebook account. And so you can export those guys and throw those into an audience, and that would be, 
audience number six, and the match rate's really, really high on that. So there you go. That's my catch-all kitchen sink audience. And you know whether it's six things or three things or one thing, you do the best that you can with what you have uh, available to you, right? Some, some listeners will be at real high-level sophistication. They'll, have, they'll even have some other things going on. But I like the kitchen sink. I use the kitchen sink all the time, even for big businesses, and it works great. So I've got this kitchen sink audience now, right? Next step, again, all in the video, is remember I talked about all these touch points. Uh, you're announcing the sale. You're setting a reminder. You're um, saying there's 24 hours left. You're, you're, you're expiring the deal, or you're announcing your Cyber Monday deal. Each one of those is an email. Each one of those should be an organic Facebook post, an organic Instagram post. So all you have to do is set up an ad group on Facebook. Again, in the video, I do it. Throw the kitchen sink audience in there. After you make the post, you just announced the sale. You just made your Facebook post. You just made your Instagram post. You go in, you turn the post into ads. It takes two minutes. That's it. Done. Turn it on. Now, you send an email. You have an organic Facebook post. Uh, you have an organic Instagram post. You have an Instagram story running, and now you have ads running on all of the Facebook placements and platforms with that exact same message. And you can do it really, really inexpensively. If you guys are just getting started $5 a day, $2 a day, I mean, I don't know what the minimum is. I think $5 a day is the minimum. Works incredibly well. Uh, you can go up to $10 a day or $15 a day or $20 a day, whatever you're comfortable investing, and that's it. It gets it done. It, it takes the omni-channel marketing to the next level, and it, 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 it is so insanely effective if you want to get attention. And if there was ever a time of the year, this would be the time to do it. So what would I do? I would figure out what my budget is. I would figure out how many touch points I'm going to have and say, you know what? I'm comfortable investing a hundred bucks. Uh, uh, let's just see what a hundred bucks does. Or maybe it's 50 bucks. And I would just spread my spend out consistently over the length. I would say, I'm going to set this thing to $10 a day. I'm going to set it to $20 a day, uh, whatever you're comfortable doing. And, you know, and, and see, number one, if it spends it. If it doesn't spend it, your audiences are too small, and that's okay. It's a chicken and the egg problem. Which came first? You just keep motoring, you'll get there. If it does spend it, great. You can see what your results are. But you want to be consistent throughout the whole thing, right? So, you know, if I'm going to be running this sale for 10 days, and I really only want to spend 100 bucks, I do $10 a day and say, okay, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it consistently. Let it run through the whole thing and see where I land. And so that's essentially the, the, the technique, um, you know, from start to finish, everything to do. And it, and it really, really is easy and it really, really is effective. And we're talking about Black Friday and Cyber Monday, but it works insanely well for anything you're doing. Um, any sale all year long, if you're having a gallery opening, and you're, you know, whatever, you need, whatever you're doing that you need to get attention. You know, you're running one of your classes or you're running a workshop or, uh, you know, yeah, you're, you're gonna be at an art fair somewhere, it just works. So the omni-channel thing is a great thing to do. There's no better time to do it than right now because already as I record this, people are, hammering black friday have been for like two weeks it seems like our society is constantly just moving back black friday advertising I mean, the next thing you know it's going to start in january uh, and just run all year I mean, it's ridiculous how far they're moving back the date so everyone else is chumming the waters which causes just whips up a fervor it's like throwing blood in the water you know throwing chum in the water so everybody's credit card is at the ready so if there's one time a year to do it this is absolutely the time of year it uh, time of year to do it, excuse me. And, you know, big picture attention right now is just super, super hard to get. You have to omni channel your marketing messages. You have to follow up with paid traffic to reach more of the attention uh, that met you all year long. And this technique, at, really at a macro, it's like, it's just the most effective way to do it. It just works. And the good news is 95% of the work in this whole thing is just executing on the basics as outlined. You don't have to be an expert. Is it technical? Yes, it is. We've got videos. Does that mean the majority of your competition is not going to do it? Yes, it does. So if you do, the chances are you're going to win uh, uh, and beat out your competition. And even if you don't, even if you don't, it's, even if you do it and you fall flat on your face, uh, it's going to make it easier to do this the next time. It's just going to make it easier to do this the next time. And what do I always say about these sales? I mean, this is essentially the same podcast I did two years ago. With, with uh, I'm going to add a new thing at the end before I forget. But... These sales are just always coming around. They're always going to continue to be coming around. There is absolutely no reason you don't want to learn how to do this. It just gets easier and easier and easier. Every time you do, you're able to execute on it quicker and quicker and quicker and pick up more things. So the, the large and the small of it is that, you know, I want to encourage you no matter where you are. Look, if you have no 
tolerance to invest in paid traffic and ads, the Omni Channel is a great place to start. If you've got the Omni Channel, figure out how you can creatively add to it. Send postcards this year, but put the paid traffic, put the paid traffic behind the messages to the warm audiences that you've marketed to all year. That is the best approach for this crazy holiday season when the ad spend is just way too much money. So if you need a visual, like look, you can take you could take less than an hour. It's not even gonna take you an hour, and that's even if you don't skip ahead or, or, or whatever, but you can take 30 to 40 minutes. I walk you through all of it step-by-step step in videos. I even have a video, I forgot to mention, I'll put this in the show notes too, but if you're the ones that, that market, on, market on Messenger and you wanna put that audience in, uh, I can save you a, a Google and some frustration. So I'll even put that video in there. The videos are super, super quick, easy to watch. There's no fluff. I even edited all the crap in the intro out of the first one. So if you feel like you're like, ah, this all sounds great, but I'm just not gonna do it. Like at least go watch the videos and understand it. You could get so close to doing it. You can follow this stuff step by step and absolutely do it, even if you're just not the most uh, tech, technical savvy person. It's it's just totally to win. So that, that's my rant on that. Let me give you one new piece of tradecraft that we're advocating this year that we didn't advocate last year that we didn't advocate uh, the year before. And this is only really gonna apply to you if you have a website that is set up to sell art, uh, an e-commerce store, that will allow you to see who are your unsold carts. And unsold carts, quick definition, you came to my website, you put something into a shopping cart, you hit the checkout button. During that process, I captured your email, so I know who you are, and then you bounced. You bounced before giving me the credit card, you're out for whatever reason. You know, in the past, we've advocated that, you know, the game is not over when the sale ends, right? At that point in time, you get, into, you get engaged in the hand-to-hand -hand combat and you go after these folks. Uh, that put things in, in, in their shopping cart and didn't check out. And that's still okay way to do it if that's the way you do it. But the things have changed. Like that hurricane that's coming, it's, it's just getting crazier and crazier and crazier. The sheer amount of distractions that happen year after year after year, email is getting less and less and less effective. Still insanely important. Don't, don't, don't misunderstand. But, you know, we now actively advocate you cannot wait. What do I mean? You're running your sale. What did I recommend before? Wait till the sale's over, then go see who did the un had unsold carts and contact all those people. Not doing that anymore. Now I'm advocating, if this is my store, I mean, so what we're telling all our customers, what, what I'm advocating for you, the minute the unsold cart comes in, you, you need to check unsold carts every day. You need to email these people, hand-to-hand -hand combat, every single solitary day, every day. And... There's so much competition. The attention is so, so so spread out all over the place, and you know Thanksgiving, the holiday, the hurricane, all of it, that it's not even worth waiting anymore. We're we're we're, we're not even waiting, and it and it's so simple, right? Like the unsold cards come in, and and the good news here too, this is like not an insane workload unless you're really 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 selling well, because a lot of times people will put the thing in their cart, say check out as guest or log in, and then bounce at that point, and sadly you have an unsold cart, but you don't know who they are. So it's really for just the ones you know who they are, but it's so simple. Hey, Patrick, saw that you added Mustang Sally to your shopping cart. If you have any questions about the piece or media type, or if you ran into any technical glitches at all, don't hesitate. Reply to this email and let me know. I'd love to help you through those things or help you work through it or whatever, right? Uh, be happy to help. Thanks again for checking out and happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. Patrick, or I mean, hey, Patrick, but Patrick, yeah. So it's something as simple as that, right? And the whole idea is hand-to-hand -hand combat. Don't let the fish off the line. You're hoping that you start a conversation and you know it's the conversational approach. And if you do open that conversation, you stand a way, way better chance at getting the sale over the line. So one extra bit of tradecraft, um, all the videos in the show notes, find those. All you have to do is just search Google for the Art Marketing Podcast. That's the easiest way. And this will be the most recent episode. Um, thanks for listening. Certainly thankful for you. Rock this Q4. It's time to go after it market it all year long now is the time no better time than today uh get after it and as always thanks for listening